Hi YouTube, I thought I'd just run through my 2016 ultralight uh, gear list for uh, the summer season. I'll just show you what I've got. There'll be links in the description to a full gear list and some of the places where I bought my stuff. So I'll start off with the pack. So a Sea to Summit 20 litre day pack. Pretty small for a three day summer hike, but uh, the bigger pack you have, the more stuff you uh, feel tempted to take. So I only have a 20 litre pack. It's got no padding on here. There's no padding on any of the pack itself. But by keeping your gear light, you don't need that padding. Everything fits inside this bag, apart from this roll. The stuff at this end of the table is what I'd actually be wearing. So I'll just go through the roll quickly. It's a multi-mat, short length multi-mat, 100 grams. Um, I keep it tied up with this Dyneema cord. I use this cord to uh, put my tarp up when I'm sitting on the tarp at the end of the day. So uh, when I'm out on the trail, I can wind this up to keep my foam mat together. And included there are some mini line locks, which you use to uh, put tension on your guy lines. Plenty of guy lines on there. So inside the pack itself, it's fairly tightly packed, you can see. But I've got everything I need in here. So I'll just take it as it comes. So I'll start off. This waterproof bag, X-Ped bag, it's a medium sized one, this has got all my spare clothes in. Starting with a waterproof jacket, right at the top of the pack, right at the top of the first bag, waterproof jacket because I live in the UK so it's always going to rain. Um, this is a Monbell waterproof jacket, doesn't have hood um, so you will get a wet head unless you're wearing a waterproof hat. Um, super lightweight, it hasn't got any pockets, but it has got some ventilation here under the arms. Um, so if you get a bit warm while it's raining, it will allow a bit of ventilation, that's 50 grams. If you've got a waterproof jacket, you want waterproof trousers. These are Montaigne waterproof trousers. Stretchy waist, a few reflective strips on there. Um, at the bottom of the trousers, you've got zips. Makes it easier to get them on and off. Um, so that's for if it's raining. If it's a bit cool, this is a summer kit, but if it's a bit cool, I've got a fleece here. It's a Montaigne Oryx fleece. It's got a full length zip. Um, in the front pocket, you've got a, a chest pocket there. There's, a, there's no pockets for your hands because they've got to keep the weight down somehow. But it's real comfy and it keeps you warm and keeps the wind off a bit. So if you're up on the hills in the middle of summer, um, it can get a little bit chilly. So a fleece is useful. Uh, I've got long johns. Again, if you're out on the trail and it's chilly, you might want to wear your long johns under your trousers. Otherwise, I use them at night. Strip off your trousers, your dirty trousers you've been wearing all day, put in on your long johns, keep you nice and warm at night. They're Heli Hansen long johns. Similarly at night I always keep a, a clean pair of dry, nice warm socks. Strip off your old socks, nice warm dry socks, keep your feet warm at night. A pair of Rab gloves, these are fleece, Polytech fleece, so they're not waterproof but they'll keep your hands warm and a, pair, a spare pair of socks as well. Nice. Oh, I've got more. I've also got a hat. It's a Haglovs hat. Haglovs Intense. Um, not waterproof, so if it does rain you will get a wet head because I haven't got anything waterproof for the head in this kit. Um, but it will keep your head warm out on the trail. All in a waterproof bag. Because the sack itself, although it's water repellent, I'm not sure how much water the zip is going to keep out. So you want all your spare clothes to stay dry. Same for your sleeping bag. I've put it in, this is a, the extra small x bed bag. So sleeping bags also kept dry. It's pretty tight fit in here. So that's the waterproof bag. It comes in a compression sack as well. This is a Yeti Zero. Um, it comes with a, the stuff sack there. It also comes with this sack, 
which at the moment I've just got all my gear that I'd, I'd wear on a trail. So when you're storing it, you let the fibres release, you store it in this sack. When you're out on the trail, you can put it in the compression sack. You don't want to keep it in here all the time though, because it will damage the fibres uh, if you leave it in there a long time. It's a full size sleeping bag, down sleeping bag. Um, it's got, um, you can tighten it up around uh, the neck area to keep the drafts out. Um, it has got a half length zip, so it goes half the way down. Uh, inside here as well, I keep a liner. Because it's down, you need to professionally clean them, which is expensive. So you can keep, help keep it clean by using a liner, silk liner. This is from Life Venture, which I picked up from Millets. Uh, it's 112 grams for the liner, and the sleeping bag itself is 280 grams. Uh, I just keep these two together. You do have to keep it dry though. If it gets wet, it uh, will not give you very good performance. Next, I've got a little stove. An Esbit stove uses little fuel tablets. So you just open it up, put your fuel tablet in there. You can put your oh, use a mug for cooking. Put a mug on top of there. Here's the mug I use for cooking, which I pack full of other stuff. These are the fuel tablets for three days. I have six fuel tablets. That should be easily enough to do six slots of uh, boiling water, lighter to light the fuel. In here I've got a, a craft blade like a Stanley knife blade, pen knives were just too heavy to put in this kit so I've got a little blade which is wrapped up in cardboard with an elastic band to keep it safe. I could use that blade to open up my packs of food or other simple tasks but it's got no handle, it's just a bare blade so you couldn't do any serious tasks with that. The mug itself, again it's a Life Venture brand one, titanium, fine for sticking on the stove, boiling up some water for a cup of coffee or for the freeze-dried food, which I'll get to in a minute. In here, various random bits of kit. Uh, Rector compass, it's got a simple compass, uh, measurements on the side for measuring on your map. It's also got a thermometer there as well. Comb. This is a half a travel toothbrush. You can brush your teeth. In this little bag are toothpaste dots, which are just dried little dots of uh, toothpaste. They're crumbling up a bit in there now. If the police stop you, they'll wonder what it is. It's only toothpaste, honestly. Um, 10 purification tablets, so that's enough for 10 litres of water to purify your water. Some toilet paper in a plastic bag. J cloth to clean out the mug at the end of the day or to clean yourself. You can easily cut it in half and use half for the mug and half for yourself. This is a Petzl Elite headlamp. I don't have a torch, I just have this headlamp. It, uh, it We'll move around on this little uh, pivot here, so you can uh, tilt it forward, tilt it to the, the sides. Um, it has various modes, if we switch it around, so that's three LEDs on full mode. Um, it'll also do flashing mode. It also has red LEDs, so flash red and stay on red for nighttime work, uh, map work at night. Um, and the battery in there lasts uh, many many hours, 100 hours or something like that I think and obviously you can just adjust it to fit your head keep all that in a plastic bag to keep it dry the food, I use these mountain house packs, they're the big packs so they're more calories than the standard ones standard ones just they're not enough to keep you going if you're out on a trail these big packs obviously have a lot more calories in so I've got a chicken korma macaroni cheese and a potato and salmon and dill sauce so that's three lots of mountain house food so that's three days worth of main meals in addition to that out on the trail I have a trail mix so this is M&M's, nuts, raisins, dried fruit, stuff like that I just put it together myself 150 grams in there so that's for one day 
another one so for the second day and then for the day when you're actually walking I've got it in here in my kit that I'll be wearing so I've got three days worth of trail food water I have one, in, one of these in the pack generally I'd use this water for rehydrating the mountain house food these are one litre platypus pouches I usually three quarters fill them rather than fill them all the way to the brim so that's 750 mils of water in there I've got another one that I'll be carrying on my person spork so I can actually eat my dinner plastic spork I did buy the titanium one but when I weighed it the titanium one actually weighs more and because this is plastic it's more flexible my pack's so tightly packed if I had the titanium one it'd probably rip the pack or rip something inside so plastic is quite useful They're only 10 grams and I'll move on to the shelter first I'll just mention this it's a foam pad I cut it out of an old sleeping pad put it in the back of the pack so I do have some padding between me and all the gear in the pack um, if I stop for a break when I sit down the ground's damp or stony I slip this out of the pack and I can sit on that it's nice and comfy yeah, it keeps your bum warm when you're sat on the ground as well um, you can also use it as a, a level surface for cooking on if you're on unlevel ground um, so that's ideal for that job um, do have these three in one coffee packs these are instant coffee sugar and milk um, so you can have one in the evening before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning so I've got three of those moving on for the shelter I've got in this sack this is a top Terranova Ultra this is ultra thin silvery material it will keep the rain off you I've got uh, these ultra thin guy lines attached to the top the places where I, I want to use it to set it up uh, it's a standard you know full size camping tarp for one person um, it's like uh, 88 grams I think that is um, made out of the same material I've got a bivy bag so this, again this is a full size bivy bag Fit in here, even if you're a large person, so it's well, it's a six foot table and it's over the edge of the table. Um, you've got a cord here, so you can cinch the cord, the uh, hood up around yourself at night. It's not breathable material, so if you get hot at night and you start sweating, you will wake up wet in the morning. So, you, you don't want to do this up too tight, you need to make sure that you've got some ventilation in there. But you can see there's plenty of room in there your sleeping bag uh, to get in there nice and warm and dry before you set up your shelter you want to put down a ground sheet so this is a Tyvek stuff builders use to waterproof your roof uh, around the edges this has been sewn around the edges with this fabric and it's also got these little loops so you can peg it down and keep it in place and this will stop any moisture in the ground uh, penetrating into your sleeping bag or your other gear that you've got um, so this is a full size ground sheet you put down first keep it dry I've got six pegs hopefully it'll be enough to peg down your ground sheet and your, your tarp as well titanium pegs only six grams each Keep all that in just this little bag. This is a little bag that the tarp came in. Only anyway, weighs six grams. And then lastly, I've got this Thermotex blanket. It's a bit like an emergency blanket, one of those plastic ones, but it's a lot better quality. It's fabric. It's a nice yellow colour on the inside, bright yellow, but it can be used for the same reasons you'd use one of those cheapo plastic ones. But this will just last a lot longer. Um, in emergency you use it to keep yourself warm or at night if you're a bit chilly you can just chuck this over yourself on top of the bivy bag or you could slip it inside the bivy bag to help keep you warm so that is all 
um, here that I'd actually be carrying. Uh, the weights um, are on my link that I'll put in the description. But basically the uh, base weight for the pack, which is not including the water, the food and the fuel, uh, comes to just slightly over 2 kilos, 2,074 grams which is under five pounds. So basically, um, the kit weighs about the same as two bags of sugar. Um, the food itself weighs just over a kilo, 1,124. And the water, I've got the 75 uh, centiliters that I keep in the pack, the mountain house meals. Plus I've got 75 centiliters that I'll actually uh, drink during the day. So the total of one and a half liters is another one and a half kilos. So I'll just go through the gear that I'll actually wear during the day. A pair of trousers, trail trousers, these are more bell I think. Yeah. So they're Mon Bell trail trousers. Just very simple. They, they have got the zips down each leg to make it easier to get them on and off when you're wearing uh, hiking boots. They do have this small little pocket if you want to put maybe a key or a few bits of loose change in this tiny little pocket, but that's the only pocket you get with these. There's no, there's no side pockets for putting your hands in. Stretchy waist. Um, they're so lightweight that if they get wet, they'll dry out you know, really quickly. But I do have the waterproof trousers anyway, if you need them. On top, I've got a simple Helly Hansen t-shirt. Again, lightweight, if it gets wet or if you're sweating as you're walking, it's a nice wicking material, it will dry out nice and quickly. Um, so that's a nice simple t-shirt to wear during the day. I have underwear, I'm not too extreme, I do still wear underwear. I do also wear socks somewhere. Yeah, so a simple, uh, small pair of socks. Um, so here's the water. What I do with the water is I'll, I'll wear it over my belt. This is a, just a simple fabric belt that I got with a pair of trousers at some point. Um, and when you have the belt on, you can just loop the top of this over here. And belt tight on, then it will stop it slipping out. And you can just slip it through, take a sip, and then um, slip it back onto the belt. It's not an ideal solution. It'd be better if the, there was a, a somewhere to attach it, maybe a hole here, a grommet, to attach it either off the belt or, or another way of attaching it. But that's what I do anyway. Um, simple digital watch, not only tell the time, set an alarm in the morning, keep track of your progress on the watch. That's just a, a cheapo Casio one. Um, this little pouch I have hanging off the belt. Inside here is that third day's trail rations. I've got the two days that's in the pack. So this is you know, what I'll be using on the day I'm walking. Exactly the same, 150 grams. So there's about 750 calories in there. And then in here is a simple first aid kit that I put together. Got tweezers, bandages, painkillers, antihistamine tablets, um, tape, um, loads of cotton wool. It's also got a little tub there of Vaseline, so if you're getting blisters, you can s soothe your feet a bit with a bit of Vaseline. And with Vaseline and cotton wool, obviously, it's great for lighting fires as well. Uh, that weighs 88 grams. And as I say, I keep that on my belt so it's immediately available. The other stuff, if I'm feeling uh, really confident, I'll take a sun hat. This is the UK, sometimes you do get sun. Uh, this is an outdoor research one. Uh, it's a nice wide brim hat, it's a floppy hat. You don't need it because it's not sunny, you know, it might happen. You can just fold it up into practically nothing. Uh, it weighs 72 grams. Um, it's better than getting sunburn on your neck or on your face. So I keep that with me. For maps, I will not take a full um, Ordnance Survey map, they weigh quite a lot, especially the, the massive uh, versions you get, the, the Leisure Series ones. So instead, I'll buy the map, I'll photocopy the bit that I want, this is just uh, one afternoon's 
uh, trail that I did, a couple of hours walking. So in my kit I've allowed 10 grams. So 10 grams is two sheets of A4 paper. See that little bit there is one afternoon's walking. So you multiply it out, two sheets of paper, especially if you're doing it both sides. You easily copy enough of the map to cover your three days walking. I've also got some poles. Some people like poles, some people don't. But if you're using a tarp, only they're useful when you're walking. But at the end of the day, you use them basically as tent poles. Um, try and get these together. These are black diamond ultra distance poles. Sort of slip together like that. Fairly simple. The carbon fibre. A pair of these poles is 270 grams. They're real comfy, obviously really lightweight, um, and great for putting up your tarp at the end of the day. It makes you walk more efficiently by using poles because it um, supports some of your weight. If you're on une uneven ground or marshy ground, boggy ground or something, then it also makes you a lot more stable, it's a lot safer, especially if you're out walking on your own. So a pair of poles. And that's it for that. That's just a file I wouldn't normally have with me. And lastly is the boots. These are Innovate 390 GTX boots, trail boots. They're not uh, heavyweight hiking boots. They are Gore-Tex, so they're pretty waterproof. Um, they've got a reasonable grip on the bottom. Um, you know, you're not going to do any serious rock climbing in these, but they're real comfy. Um, some people might like uh, a lower cut here and other people like a, a lot more support on their ankles personally that's, that's sort of mid-range uh, version of ankle support is what I prefer I do like some support but I don't want it all the way up my leg at my shin um, so those are ideal for me they're 780 grams so that's all my kit which would be fine for summer use during in, in the UK the Rating on a sleeping bag, if you're wondering about temperatures. Sleeping bag's comfort rating of 15 degrees centigrade, a limit of 12 and an extreme of minus one. So that's why I've said it's, it's really only a, a summer uh, gear set. You wouldn't want to be using a sleeping bag like that during the winter. Um, I don't have a down jacket, originally it was on the list, but when I went to buy it they didn't have it in my size, so I've never actually added that to the kit. So again, that's another reason why I'd only say it's a summer kit. Um, I've got the fleece, but I don't have a down jacket. I wouldn't want to go out when it's really cold with this kit. Um, but it should be fine for two or three days out in the UK on the trails. It's got most of the stuff you want. If you think there's anything I'm missing, anything that's excessive, don't need it, and I could take out, save some weight, then please comment. If you think I'm missing something vital that I can't do without, again, um, please comment and I'll be interested to see what you've got to say. Thanks.